head first with the skills that I will teach you at work and say no. no you will not control me no, no. you will not take my soul no. no you will not win this game because it is a game guys you want to think it's not huh you want to think it's not you go back to the schoolyard and you have that crush on big titted Mary Jane <laughs> respect the cock. You are embedding this thought. I am the one who's in charge. I am the one who says yes, no, now, here. It's universal, man. It is evolutional. It is anthropological. It is biological. Oh, it is animal. We are. Men. She says she doesn't feel that way about me. I don't think there's anyone in this room that doesn't understand that kind of pain, Jeff. And I want to thank you for sharing that with us. Right? Let me tell you what we're going to teach Denise when we put our calendars to work and we set goals. Right? What I say is, Denise, Denise, the peace, I mark it down, oh, I write it up, and you have been warned. Because I have my lasers. I have my tasers, I have my ICBMs, I have my bazookas, I have my jets pointed right at you. Because me and my brothers, we like to celebrate. And on the 1st of May, we celebrate V-Day. Yeah. <laughs> and come June, oh ho, baby, it is the lick of my spoon. Yeah. Come on, guest. We like to celebrate Saint Suck My Big Fat Fucking Sausage! I set goals for myself, and what? I say I do not want to take it anymore. I will not take it anymore. You think she's your friend, Joff. You come here and you think she's your friend. They're not your friends. Do you really think that she's going to be there when things go bad? Huh, guys? When things go wrong, do you think they're going to be there for us? Oh, you think again. Oh, fucking Denise, Denise the Peace. You were gonna give me that cherry pie, sweet mama baby. <laughs> oh yeah, but listen up. That is not to say that we don't all need females just as friends, because we're gonna learn later in chapter 23 that having a couple of chick friends lying around coming real handy and setting jealousy traps. We'll get to that later. Welcome back from the break. How'd you guys like those nachos? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you are not here for the fucking food. You are here for me to 
enlighten you, to edify you, to send you off into the now not so unknown future. So come along with me. How to fake like you are nice and caring. No, I don't want a microphone. Now this, this is a quite an important chapter as you will see. But let's get down to brass tacks. Let's get right down to it, boys. Let's get right down to it. Men are shit. What? Men are shit. Well, isn't that what they say? Isn't that what, because we do bad things, don't we? We do horrible, heinous, heinous, terrible things. Things that no woman would ever do. So women, they don't lie. No, women don't cheat. Women don't manipulate us. But you see what I'm getting at? Oh yeah, you see what I'm getting at? You see what society does? Boy, little boys, it's... Yeah, we are taught to apologize. I am sorry. I am so sorry, baby. I am so sorry. What is it that... What is it, huh? What do you, is it their, their pussies, their uh, love? Yeah, mommy wouldn't let me play soccer, and daddy, oh, he hit me. So that's, that's who I am. That's, that's why I do what I do. <laughs> like a bullshit. I will not apologize for who I am. I will not apologize for what I need. I will not apologize for what I want. Okay. I go to your blue booklets right now. I want you to turn to page 18 in your blue booklets. Fuck this fucking bullshit. I want you to go to your white, your white books. That's what I want you to go to. Go to 23 in your white books. How to fake. Like you are a nice and caring person. Oh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Ramble for Radio. I am your host, Gen T. Twitter and Instagram at Gen T523. Yeah! What's good, motherfuckers? Are you fired the fuck up? I'm sure if you have a penis, you are. If you have a vagina, I'm sure you turned this thing off about four minutes ago. (laughs) But listen, listen to me. That shit gets me fired the fuck up. My man, Frank TJ Mackey, a.k.a. Tom Cruise, coming through. Uh, That is from the movie Magnolia. And basically, Tom Cruise is this motivational... Uh, character for men who can't get dates they're like incels before the word incel was invented and he's teaching these guys how to get laid right so you gotta watch this movie magnolia because it's a trip and it's about how things aren't always what they seem but that excerpt is from the frank tj mackey seduce and destroy class <laughs> and i'm playing that because my man at rain man rds my man nick came down here to hang out with me in san diego this past weekend and what the hell okay so let me get into it with you guys so my man rain man came down here from Washington on a business trip, but we knew the whole point. We discussed this before ahead of time. I said, bruh, when you come down here, we got to we gotta work on a strategy to get you laid, bruh. This is it. We got to get you back in the saddle. We're going we're gonna to get you some. You're going to work your first couple days you're here, and then it's down to the business. All right, we're gonna find you a hottie with the body because we're in San Diego, and and you can you can blink, and there's hatches everywhere. So I said, there is no excuse. You come down here, you're getting some. You're not leaving. You're not going back to to the frigid cold of Washington without getting some. 
All right. So we had hatched a plan that we would go out for drinks and then I would be his wing mannish lady. So we, we started getting our drink on, watching the fights. And we were meeting his friends and he was sending me pictures of some of these friends before I got there. And I was like, oh, damn, do any of your friends like ladies? Do they dip in the lady pond? <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was like, that's okay. Let me not be let me not be selfish. Let me take care of my friend. Because that's what I do. I'm a good friend. I take care of my friends. Don't worry about me. I take care of my friends. So we're down in Pacific Beach. I said, let's get the party started early. Let's let's get some drinks, cheap drinks, and, and we'll get this going. So we're in PB. And the chicks are hot as hell. And I said, hey, what's the deal with your friend? Her friend, his friend lives down there. We'll call her Denise the Peace. <laughs> like my man Frank TJ Maggie said, Denise the Peace. You gotta give me that cherry pie. <laughs> oh shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. So I was like, yo, what's the word on Denise the Peace? And he says, I don't know if she's coming out. And I was like, oh, no, bro. I just drove for two fucking hours. You can't. We, we got to get you laid, man. We can't. I can't leave the city limits. I drove for two fucking hours in the rain down here for you to get laid. We need to make sure Denise the Peace is ready to go. He's like, I don't know. She's saying she may or may not come out. And then he's like, last night, there was another chick, too, but she bailed. And I was like, ah, fuck. I said, well, I'm here now. So let's get this shit on the road. So we're waiting, waiting around. We're in happy hour. Then we get the word. Then we get the word that Denise the Peace is available. She's ready to hang out. And I'm like, all right. So showed me a picture of her. And I was like, oh, damn. Oh, damn. She's pretty cute. And I was like, oh, shit. This girl is fine. Too bad she's straight. Um, but let me be a good friend. <laughs> not, let me not be evil. <laughs> so we get to the bar. We get to the bar. And Denise the Peace walks in. I was like, oh, shit. Yo. Yo. I was like, wow, you got to seal the deal with this. This is official. So he's like, yep. He's like, I think so. And I'm like, yup. Ah, uh, yup. <laughs> so we're just chit-chatting a little bit. And I invite a couple other friends around. Shout out to Jen for the block. Uh, she stopped by for a little bit. And then the plan was to just chit-chat a little bit. And then they go out and then they go do their business. You know, they go, you know, do their thing. So when I left, I was getting ready to leave. And I was so bummed because I really wanted to stay out later. But this is a two-hour drive and I've been drinking. And, you know, when I drink, I get tired, fam. I get tired. So I got to go. So this is a two-hour drive. So I was like, fuck, I got to leave. It's 10 o'clock. And she's like, why are you leaving? Why are you leaving? The party just started. I was like, oh no, I gotta go. But secretly, I was like, yo, Rain Man, better get this shit done. Next time I talk to you, I wanna hear that you got this done, bruh. Nada, nada. I want the deets that something happened, something magical happened, and you got the job done. That's why I drove two fucking hours there, and I'm driving two fucking hours back. Because I got to get up for work at 5 o'clock in the morning the next day. And I was literally telling the waitress this. And she's like, why are you leaving? Everybody's like, yeah, why are you leaving? I was like, oh, because I got a two-hour drive back. And she's like, oh, my God, girl. Quit your job and join the circus. <laughs> and I said, bitch, you don't know where I work. I work at the circus. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck And they, they want me there at fucking 5 a.m. She's like, oh god, that sucks. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. I got I need to sort my life out, but we'll get to that in a minute. So back to my man Rain Man. 
nice guy, makes good money, handsome as hell. And it's not gay for me to say that. He's a handsome man. And he's got one of them beards now. So he's all rugged. He used to be a baby face assassin. Now he's got one of those manly beards that all you chicks love. My man, my homie, Rain Man, is the shit. He's a, a solid dude. Who any girl would be lucky to have this man. And yet, he struggles that bad. I mean, so do I. I'm not. Let me be clear. Your dear host, Rambo Pro is failing <laughs> but this ain't about me it's about my homeboy rain man so i'm like all right bro i'm leaving but the next time i hear from you you're telling me stories about how you got it in all right i don't want to fucking hear nothing else four hours my fucking day spent in the car you better get this shit done okay so i leave drive for two hours i regret my drive the entire time i get sleepy about 45 minutes away from san diego is temecula ish is better than shits bernardino because at least land is cheap and it's not totally hood like you could have uh super nice neighbors and not to mention the best part of temecula hello wine (laughs) they have wine country there so Everybody's nice and friendly and having a good old time. You don't have to worry about getting shot or stabbed or something in Temecula. I mean, that's just a a rarity, a rarefied air if you do. (laughs) Um, And then also you got all these cool people who ride dirt bikes and stuff. So everybody's pretty chill in Temecula. They're either really chill or they're uppity, like upper crust. I played a couple of basketball tournaments in Temecula and, yo, people be bougie as hell. But um, still, I'd rather live in Temecula than fucking shit's Bernardino. So anyways, about 45 minutes in i'm just like falling asleep so luckily my friend was streaming the fights the ufc fights so i was listening to the audio wink wink listening to the audio to stay awake watch uh, now watching listening to the fights and maybe occasionally checking my friend's insta story to see where he was at with denise the peace and so far everything was looking good they went to another bar they were watching somebody play guitar they were you know they're hitting it off a little make out sesh i was like okay all right it was worth the drive my buddy my buddy rain man's gonna get it in i get home and i just check the instant story one more time at 1 a.m. just to see and they're wandering around the bar still I'm like yeah this is it this is time because the bar closes at 2 that means they gotta go home and my man don't live there so that means they're going back to her place okay so this is good things are good so I don't check really my social media when I'm working and doing all that stuff I'm trying to focus on work whatever lies Um, so I don't see anything so I'm like all right Well, you got to put the phone away at some point, right? You're going to get it in. You don't need your phone out. You can't be recording stuff unless she's into that. Um, So Sunday, I don't don't hear anything. Um, I text him. Or no, I text him just before I went to bed. I said, hey, don't forget to go to Stone Brewery before you leave. You know, so you and and Denise the Peace can have uh, some some good lunch and, and a couple of beers. He's like, yo, I'll never forget that. He's like, I'll never miss an opportunity to go have some some beer. And I was like, all right. So didn't hear anything all day Sunday. So I just figured my man's got it in. And he's resting. Uh, come to find out Monday afternoon, he gets home from his trip. I find out the horror story. The horror of my man's night. So, you know, when you have a, a wing man or a wing lady or a mannish wing lady, um, they're supposed to protect you from all things. Now, granted, I might have left my post a little bit early, but I felt like it was a slam dunk. It was a slam dunk. I figured my man's got it from here. I don't need to, you know, babysit. I don't need to help my friend put it in Denise the Peace. Okay, right? Come on. I might have left a little bit early. But I felt like this was an easy shot, an easy layup. 
come to find out that some other dude came to hang out with my man Rain Man and Denise the Peace. Okay, fine, whatever. It was her friend. So he said right around the 2 a.m. ish time to head back to her place, Denise the Peace house. And this dude, this rando, doesn't leave. I'm sorry, what? Yo, hey, could you leave? Denise the Peace and Rain Man are trying to get it in here. Can you go home now, my guy? Rando, leave. No. Rando comes back to the apartment with my friend Rain Man and Denise the Peace. And so he said, well, he was still there. So he said that they started making out. They're making out. Making out a lot. And even Denise the Peace said, hey, let's uh, head back to my room. Let's uh, get... Get, get, bit, get, get, bit, shake, get, 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 how dare you? Where's my Greta button? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? When you see that my friend Rain Man is trying to get it in, how dare you stay? How dare you? And the man trying to be nice because my, my man Rain Man is a nice guy. Maybe too nice. That's why I played that clip at the beginning of the show because he fuck needs to hear this. Even Denise the P said, Hey, um, my friend won't leave. I don't know why he's here and I don't, yeah, I'm just too nice. I don't wanna, I don't wanna tell him to leave. Bruh! This is the time you tell him to get the fuck out! (laughs) You either get the fuck out or wait your turn! <laughs> Yo, am I right? Am I crazy? What the fuck, man? You know they're making out on the couch. You know they're tr- they're trying to get busy. The signs are there. Denise the Peace even had the audacity, the audacity to tell my friend that she dips in the lady pond. If that motherfucker would have texted me, I would have drove back. <laughs> <laughs> I would have drove back from Shit's Bernardino. <laughs> Denise the Peace. Is it V Day? <laughs> oh shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. She's over here telling him that she can eat vagina better than he can. <laughs> Yo, this is Steph Calm Forward. You need to have sex with my man right now. You need to have sex with my my friend Rain Man. He has flown all the way from Washington with nothing but snow, mountains, horses, and apples. Give my brother a chance, please. How dare you not kick this rando guy out? You're down. You, you're DTF. You're ready to smush with my friend. You're telling him he eat vagina better than he can. You're telling him you dip in the lady pond. You're making out with him. You grab him, a guy. And you don't. You, 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 you don't. You don't let him see the deal. Denise the peace. Shame. 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 And how come you let my friend Rayman kick that rando out? Kick your friend out. He's your friend. My my homie Rayman shouldn't have to do that. He shouldn't have to do that. 
But no. Denise the Peace. Let her friends stay there. Let her rando guy friends stay there. She was DTF. Down for my guy, Rain Man. At Rain Man RDS. And fucking left him out to dry. I cannot believe this shit. How the fuck do you do you do this? How dare you? This is just the ultimate ridiculous. How you could you? Let me just. Ah. How could you do this to my friend Rayman? I'm heartbroken for him. My man put in all of the work. Spent Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's Saturday. My man spent four fucking days putting in work. Denise the Peace out here saying she's ready to go. Out here saying sexual things. Out here making out with my friend. But you don't have the nerve or the gumption to kick this other guy out. If I would have been there, I would have fucking made out with the guy. I would have been like, bro, I <laughs> please leave. <laughs> Something. My God. Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, the horror. The absolute horror that you would fucking fly all that time. Spend four days fucking grafting this chick, Denise the Peace. She's ready to give it up. And then at the final fucking countdown, when it counts, when it's time, when it's game time, she did not kick her friend out. Why? Why would you do that to my guy? Why? Why? How dare you? How dare you? (laughs) Shame. 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 <laughs> oh my god, I'm fucking heartbroken. When I heard that fucking story, I just I'm devastated for my friend. I'm absolutely fucking devastated. He spent four fucking days being nice nice to Denise the Peace. Now, they know each other. They go way back. They're way back homies. There is a chance again for him to maybe get at Denise the Peace again, but who the fuck knows? He lives in Washington. She lives in San Diego. Maybe by the time Rain Man gets down here, Denise the Peace has already moved on with this rando. <sighs> I'm just, I'm beside myself. How, how do you ladies do this? How do you fucking do this? You say you're ready to go. It's down to the 11th hour. The clock is counting down. And then, and then you just leave my man hanging like that. How? How, Sway? How? How, take Sway? A, take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, water. man. You ain't it's got the answers. Do you, if you are listening to the show, whether you are a man or a woman, I urge you to please pour one out for my homie Rain Man because he got denied. Denied. Hard. I just don't know how you get too. Almost to seal the deal and then access denied. How the fuck does that happen? Science cannot measure the level of confusion I'm experiencing that he is probably experiencing right now as well. But I just had to tell y'all that. I had to I had to let y'all know about my man Rayman. But I had a, an awesome time up until leaving. I I feel like I feel a little bit of survivor's guilt. Like I should have went down there and did something to this rando like I don't know give him a hand job or or shoot him out or bought him some beer and sent him on his merry way like I felt like I really needed to be security detail for my man Rain Man because I feel like if I would have been there I would have been like hey rando you kick fucking rocks my man's trying to get it in here <laughs> can you leave get the fuck out like what is this what are you doing you know so i just ugh. i just wish denise the peace you know i, 
kind of feel like Denise the Peace maybe set my man up a little bit. Like she was trying to see who would vibe for her attention more kind of a thing. Cause why would she allow this rando dude that she knows to stay there when somebody like my friend Rayman that she's known since high school, why would she allow that rando to stay there for a long time? It's like she wanted to get it in with my friend Rayman, but then not. Like, if you wanted to get it in, like, you would have sent the rando home, right? Ladies, I mean, come on. Is there one lady listening to this conversation? Because it seems very... <laughs> it seems slightly non-feminine. <laughs> How can I put this in a gentle way? <laughs> but damn... Yeah. I feel like maybe Denise Peace maybe set my man's up a little bit. Just just a tad. Because if you was trying to give it up to my friend, if you were about about it, if you were ready, knock if you buck, like you would have kicked the rando out. So I feel like she kind of set my man's up. You know? She let him do all that work. I probably bought all the drinks because he's a nice guy. Damn, at least, at least hook my man up with a BJ, something. He flew out his way. And then he goes home with nothing? How? God damn. Life, you are a cruel motherfucker. (laughs) Um, Please, shout out to my friend Rayman at RaymanRDS. He needs lots of love. And if you live in the Washington State area... Please, for the love of God, don't make my man work so hard. Help him. He did all this work for four days. Was the nice, nice guy. And he was ready to get some. And then Denise the Peace pulled the ejector seat. Damn. Come on. If you live in Washington State, show my man at Rayman RDS some love. Uh, please. <laughs> I hope you've been enjoying the sweet sounds of K Tronada during the podcast. And I, th- I thought it would be a good idea to play K Tronada. And I've also titled the show uh, Bubba, which is the latest uh, drop from K Tronada. K Tronada's from Canada. He's this dope ass DJ who has figured out how to bring back a 90s style hip hop sound with a futuristic vibe and I told my man Rayman and I will tell you this that you're listening if you wants to get laid put on some K-Tronada chicks vibe this shit every chick that I've played this for so far I mean I wasn't trying to like get in her pants or nothing but people that were riding around this week with me in the car chicks we're vibing when I was playing. They're like, yo, this is dope. This is really cool, chill music. Like, uh, I'm feeling kind of funky. Like, uh, or I want to relax. Like, this is really cool. Like, people appreciate this. I have yet to have met a single person this week via text in person that has not liked the K Tronada album. The new one, Bubba. Now, if you go back and listen to 99.9%, you may or may not like that because it's a little bit more upbeat. I like it. It's great for the gym. I like it because it's really, it's got a breakdancing kind of vibe. But something about this album, Bubba, is just like, you just, you just melt, man. You just melt away. Everything just kind of goes away. Like, if you're stressed out about something... Or you're just not feeling good. Put Bubba on. Like, when I saw K Tronada at Coachella, the majority of the crowd, if they were not on whatever pills they were taking, this music is designed for you to basically hit a joint and just chill. Or if you don't do drugs, that you just chill. You either hit the joint and chill, or you just chill. This is some kind of like feel good get some good thoughts in like it just helps you just relax or what I found it to be is not only was a a relaxing it also helped me have a clear head like there was a lot of drama going on 
I was thinking about my, my homie Rain Man and how this chick kind of was just like, eh, Denise the Peace. And then I was just thinking about my own ish I got going on, how I got to drop. I got to be 200 by by this year. Next Christmas, I got to be 200 pounds. That's an if, ands, or but. And if I don't lose this 200 pounds, if I don't, well, 200 pounds would be great. I think I would be dead if I lost 200. But if I don't get to 200 pounds, this is it. I will retire as a loser. I will stay in my dead-end ass job, and I will become a nobody. I've got to lose this weight. That's how important this shit is. That's how important this is. Everything is riding on this. This is it. The last hurrah. I am tired of my New Year's resolution since I was six. It's to lose weight. (laughs) I'm tired of that. I would like to have a new New Year's resolution. Like, let me try and... um, let me try and, and work on a better skill. Let me let me learn a new skill set this year instead of every fucking year my my New Year's resolution is weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. Like I'm sick of this shit. I am sick of this shit. Straight up. Now more than ever before, I am sick of this shit. Like I'm just over it. Like if I can't get this shit done, if I can't be 200 pounds by December of 2020, it's a wrap. It's over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. I will simply throw up my hands and say, Arriva Dirty Life, it's over. I'm done. You can't loop, you can't get to 200 pounds. You're a waste man. Trash. Rubbish. Garbage. I'm garbage. And I will retire as a loser. How, how terrible my life is because I can't get this shit done. I don't want to do that forever. I cannot stand it. I'm sure you're tired of listening about it. I'm tired of it. It's all that rolls around in my head. So back to Kate Trinata, I was just like listening to it. And I was just like getting me in the zone. Like, yo, this is it. Just focus on this. If everything else falls the fuck off, who cares? Just pay your bills and go to the fucking gym. This is it. This is what you should do. Stop fucking with these Tinderellas. Stop going on this Bumbleinas. Uh, enough with the OK Cupid. And forget about the the gay lady app. Her, because it sucks donkey dicks. Nothing but trash on there. There's nothing but dudes on there. To be fair, let me be. Let me just be real. There, other than the people that work for the her app. Other than the gay ladies that work for that app, there's nothing but dudes pretending to be gay ladies on there. <laughs> I'm going to keep it real 100 with you. Jeez. <laughs> uh, so I'm just like, I've, I've, I've reached a breaking point. That's why I played the clip that I played for you. Not just because of my homie Rain Man, but I also needed that reminder. That's one of my favorite clips because it's just, it's just forceful. It's right to the fucking point. This is what you need to do. All of these these locked doors that I have, there's probably three three locked doors. And they all relate to my weight loss. All I've got to do is lose the weight. And these three doors open up. Three doors of opportunity can open up if I lose weight. If I get down to 200 pounds... These three doors will open up. I know it. I just know it. I am a thousand percent sure. You cannot tell me otherwise because these are the only three doors left. This is it. I'm happy. I'm content. I'm having fun. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, this is the one stone left in my bag that I can't drop off. I need to dump this rucksack. Like I'm, I've been carrying it too long. And I've had enough. I've reached a breaking point. I need to throw this stone away. I need to get it off me. Okay? Just like stones in England are measured in your pounds, I gotta lose a lot of stones. I'm too many stones right now. But once those stones are gone, it's like those three final doors are gonna fucking open up. This is it. I'm at the boss level. I'm at boss level stage. So, and the last boss that I got to fight is me. This is here and you can only get this done. But if you weren't so fat, you could get this done. 
or this job opportunity is available to you, but you weren't if you weren't so fat. Like, oh, this chick, this chick would totally j- date you. She would probably give you an opportunity. But if you weren't so fat, this is where I'm at. Boss level, son. I'm at boss level stage. And it's just me. It's just me in a fucking mirror. And I have to beat that. I have to beat what I see in the mirror. I have to. This is it. The last hurrah. <sighs> this is it. <laughs> so, I have fallen off on a tangent, but back to Katranama. What I'm saying to you is, please do yourself a thousand favors. If you do anything during this episode, it's up, scratch your head. Please, for the love of God, in the name of Zeus's butthole, download... Go Spotify, go Apple Music, YouTube, K Trinata, K A Y T R A N A D A, all caps, K Trinata. And I'm telling you, you're gonna like it. You will not not like this band. I promise you, you will not not like this DJ. He is so dope. And if you don't like it, then okay, you are the rare. You are the rare breed, and that's all right if you don't like 90s hip-hop kind of style. But I'm telling you, you will like at least one fucking song. You go to his Spotify page, and you just go and listen through all the music he's got on there and get back to me. You get back to me, and you tell me, Oh, man, all of it was terrible. Rambo, this was awful. You wasted my time. No, not a single one of you will say that. You will say, you know what? I didn't like some things, but I love this. This is dope. I hope you will say, all of it was amazing. Well, no. As a fan, I'd say there's one or two tracks, take it or leave it. But there's literally one song on Bubba that's kind of like, eh. eh." But you'll still vibe with it. Because the way Bubba is made, is it just sounds like one track. You'll be like, where the fuck am I? When's the next song coming on? I haven't hit skip. This is weird. Yeah, that's K Trinata. Boom. That's right. Go on. Go listen to K Trinata. This is music that is good for your fucking soul. Okay? It will feed your soul, I swear. All people of all races, all creeds, all gayness, all straightness, all bi-ness, pan, sexual, triness. Well, fucking love Kate Trinata. And if you don't, at me. Change my motherfucking mind. Tell me how bad Kate Trinata is. I dare you. I dare you. You ain't gonna say shit. Other than that, Kate Trinata is awesome. You're welcome. Breaking news. Breaking news. This just in. This just in. Impeachment news. Rap over radio. News. 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 Uh, this just in impeachment news. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Got you. I don't give a fuck. Oh, I would say that I do kind of sort of give a fuck. That was a slight lie. Um, listen, you dumb son of a bitches. Do not impeach Trump and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you fucking why. This motherfucking my pants is worse. Yo, I, you, I'm breaking my rule. I know I said I don't like to talk about politics on here, but just real quick, just real quick. Don't none of you motherfuckers vote to impeach Trump, and I'm going to tell you why. Mike Pence is the worst motherfucker on this earth, I swear to God. This guy will be in charge if you get rid of Trump. You think Trump is bad? You think Trump is bad? Oh, Mike Pence. This, let me let me give you the scoop on Mike Pence real quick, real quick. Mike Pence is the motherfucker who came from, who was the the governor of Indiana. Mike Pence is the motherfucker who, if now 
obviously, if you feel some kind of way about abortion, whatever. Sorry, here it is. But Mike Pence is the motherfucker who was so against abortion that as a deterrent for people getting abortions, he wanted to make it law that if you have an abortion, that you are supposed to bury the fetus yourself. No, kids, this is not fake news. This is some real shit that was on this motherfucker's website. On this dude's website. On this motherfucker's website. Before he got elected, he had all this bullshit on his website. Talking about how if you have an abortion, he he actually took this to vote, if I'm not mistaken. I remember reading that he took this to vote to Congress to try and get this passed, but it got denied. It got shot down. This motherfucker wanted to have a bill where you, if you had an abortion, that you were supposed to bury the baby that was aborted out of you. What kind of sick motherfucker is this? Now, granted, you might be pro-life. All right, bless you. Bless you. I see your side. I used to be pro-life until a certain situation happened in my family and um, a certain person that I, I know and love dearly was raped and guess what? I do not think it's fair that she should have to carry this rapist baby. So she fucking didn't. And her life has been a thousand percent better. Obviously, she is traumatized from rape. But could you imagine having to carry a, a child from rape? Go on. Tell me that she was supposed to save this child. Go on. Tell me. Now... I, at one point, was pro-life, but I have switched to pro-choice because it is up to the lady who is carrying this. If you think you are strong enough to carry a rapist baby, then do it. Fine. But if you ain't, then you deserve the option. You deserve the right to choose. And I do not think it is fair for the government to tell you what to do with your body. Okay? Okay. All of these fellers who are pro-life. It's like, all right, yeah, pro-life, pro-life. Okay, well, where are all of you adopting these unwanted children? Because we got a whole lot of them around. Where are you? You are the same motherfuckers who not only do not want to adopt these children, you also don't want to put in the funds for these services to take care of these kids. So, quite frankly, we need a lot of these people to have the right to choose. Anyway. Contuver. Um, back to Mike Pence. This douchebag, this jackal, wanted gay men who had contracted HIV. In order for them to get their medicine, he wanted them to go through conversion therapy. And if you don't know what conversion therapy is, that is where they brainwash you and tell you that being gay is a sin until you no longer are are quote-unquote gay if you will and if you remember from a couple of podcasts ago conversion therapy don't fucking work and your dear host rambo went through conversion therapy um the head guy that was in charge of the largest gay conversion therapy clinic just came out as gay So, yes, it does not work. It's super fucked up. It does not work. The end. This guy, Mike Pence, who is our vice president, wanted people who would die if they didn't get their medicine to get conversion therapy. I mean, what kind of sicko? You're stupid. Just fucking stupid. So, flash forward to now, y'all want to impeach Trump and get Mike Pence in charge? Oh, So I'm hoping, I'm praying. I feel like this impeachment shit is a big nothing burger, and I hope it will stay that way. And I hope the rest of America will come to their senses and realize what seeds of evil are being planted if you get Trump out. 
We will have Mike Pence. He will be in charge. And quite frankly, I do not want that motherfucker in charge of anything. I don't want him in charge of a Bible study, to be fair. Because there ain't nothing Christian about a man who wants to torture people so that they get their medicine or they'll die. Okay. All right. Yeah. Real Christian. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Oh, that's right. Praise the Lord. Yes, Jesus. You better praise the Lord. You better get, you better say you're not gay or you're going to get, not going to get your medicine and die. You better, you better say you're not gay and accept the Lord in your life or I'm not going to give you your medicine and you'll die. What kind of Christianity is that? What? (laughs) Jog off. That's the kind of Christianity that ain't Christian. That's for sure. All right. Let me get the fuck off my soapbox. Let me get the fuck off my soapbox and leave y'all with some shit right here. On Tinder, this little Tinderelli hit me up. Okay. This little Tinderelli hit me up. She's pretty cute. I'm not going to lie. So you, you got me. Oops. I just opened up Tinder now, and some feller uh, is, is half naked on here, but I digress. <laughs> um, I will not say this unmentionable's name, but she is in the military. I will say that. I'm not going to say what branch she's in because I don't like to, you know, even though Don't Ask, Don't Tell is over with, I just don't like to be putting people's mess out there because she hasn't actually said that. We've been communicating, but she hasn't actually said that she is a lesbian or she is bisexual or she is pansexual or she is trisexual, whatever the fuck. We've been chatting a little bit, right? But these chats, these chats are like, three four days apart so my thought is if you uh, okay you're in the military you're busy I get it Uh, one of my homies I don't know what level of training or what's going on but one of my homies that is in there they take the phone away you don't have access to the phone you get it at a certain amount of time or yada yada so Maybe they're taking the phone away. I don't know what's going on. But maybe you shouldn't be on a dating app if you just don't have time to talk. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm being patient. But when it takes you four fucking days to respond, and when you respond, it's like six words? Like, fam, I... Come on. Come on. Wouldn't you think... If somebody's trying to get off the dating app, if somebody's trying to have a relationship, you're one of these uh, lesbianists, you're trying to like second date, you all move in, get married by the month. You know what I mean? Okay, maybe I'm not, but I know most of y'all are, and that's fine. I respect that, but I'm not ready for all that. But couldn't you just be a little bit into the conversation? Like four days? Like, I figure if you want something, you're going to go after it. You're going to take the time. If somebody means something to you, you're going to set aside the time. You're going to do whatever you need to do. You're going to take care of it. Or you're at least going to let them know, like, hey, yo, what's up? This is what's going on. So I'm in the military. This is my schedule. Uh, I'll hit you up as best I can. None of that was discussed. I just assumed that. Based on what's going on with the photos. I just assumed that. I seen the military garb on. So I'm like cool. You're a busy ass lady. But. Shouldn't you. If it takes you four days to respond. And the response is very vague. You're not really asking me questions. I'm doing all the work. What the fuck is this? What are we doing fam? The last message I got. <laughs> fucking yesterday it was <laughs> I've been sick and I slept for 21 hours ha- bitch you 20 nah I'm hitting the ejector seat <laughs> it's a no fam you, you had me with the body in the in the military uniform. You had me. Um, we was chatting up for a little bit, and then 
just kind of ghosted, but then kind of came back. What are we? What are we doing? Let's not waste each other's time. Clearly, you have no time to be in a relationship. Get your ass off the tenders. No tenderellies for you until you can figure your life out. All right? I'm ready to go. I was ready to go years ago. Come on. What are we doing? Let's not waste each other's time. I'm on this dating app thing. I'm on several dating apps. I'm serious about getting this done. Hell, y'all know I'm fucking paying for this shit like a fucking jackass. I'm paying for this shit so I can see all you hotties with the bodies who keep liking me that don't have the guts to send me a message. Okay, so let's five messages. When are we meeting? Am I coming to the base? What's going on? <laughs> Are we meeting at 0400 hours? What is this? We're not going to do anything. Don't waste my fucking time. Oh, Jesus, God. I can't with these chicks. And and, and since then, I've mentioned, since I've started paying for this shit, y'all like to talk a lot and then ghost. Like, we get to the, we get to the let's meet message and then you're like, gone. I don't know what to say. I don't, I just, I just had it with y'all. I just fucking had it with y'all. It's just, it's just fucking time wasters, man. Straight up. Straight up time wasters. Go on. Tell your friend. Go find a lady who's actually serious. Who wants to be my Tenderella. For real, real. And not for play, play. Where's the real Tenderellas at? Y'all can hit me up. The rest of y'all fake Tenderellas stay home. All your fake bumbolinas, just delete your account. If you ain't serious about having a relationship or friends with benefits, press one for friends with benefits, press two for relationship. If you ain't pressing one or two, uno or dos, then you need to get the getting kick rocks. Because <laughs> you clogging up the line, okay? You clogging it up for sure. You wasting people's time, fam. You got to get the step in. If you ain't trying to achieve something on this dating app, then you got to you got to get going. Um, but my final question is, I want to know. They were talking on the show today on the Jason Ellis show. They were talking to at Jamie Fox XXX. Um, they were asking her what would be her number for her to show her boobs or her vagina. And she said not even a million dollars. But if she's dating somebody, she's showing the goods. OK, fine. I get that. So I would like to know what you would do for a Millie. What would you do for a Millie job? Oh, shoot. What would you do for a Millie? If you're a straight man, would you let, would you let a gay dude jack you off? <laughs> I said I would show the Tatas for a Millie. And I don't have good Processes at all They are terrible These joints are like A stack of pancakes Like they is like I don't worry At winter time About my feet getting cold Because my tits Rest on top of my feet <laughs> I, I got foot warmers Alright <laughs> They got nipples on the end <laughs> Yo But I said I told my friends today I said guys We was in a group chat Listening to the show Talking I said guys I would totally show my tits for a milli. Because you could buy it, you could buy property and rent it and make more money. You're like set for life, basically. Even if they tax you and take half, you buy it, you buy a couple of properties, you buy a couple of cheapy houses and fix them up, like two, and then rent those fuckers out. You're, you're golden, you're set. You're set for life. You're set. So, of course, and I said, yeah, and, and they kept asking Jamie, they're like, yeah, would you show your hashtag sick tits? And I was like, yeah, I would show mine. I would show mine, and I would put hashtag shit tits. <laughs> but I started going around work, <laughs> and I said, yo, my mans, I said, would you let your homie uh, give you a hand job for a million dollars? And he said, ooh. He's like, do I have to finish? I was like, yeah, you have to finish. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> and I said, bro, it's a million dollars. And he said, wait. 
Can I buy anything with a million dollars? He said, bro, it's yours, but you got to finish. <laughs> and he said, deal. <laughs> oh, God damn it. And then uh, my homie mentioned to me uh, about an unspeakable. He said, would you let this unspeakable uh, go down on you? And I said, bro, I don't need a million dollars for this unspeakable to go down on me. You got a hundred and she could do it right now. <laughs> Uh, I ain't saying a fucking name. I ain't saying a fucking name. <laughs> but I will say this. I will say this. Speaking of unmentionables, I will leave what situation um, I know this individual from. I will just say she is an unmentionable. And a long time ago, I've talked about this, but it has suddenly resurfaced again. I was. Uh, uh, walking around because you know I got to get my steps in because I'm trying to lose weight. I'm either stepping or running or both. And getting my steps in, I overheard a conversation. And this conversation entailed about how this unmentionable is known as Dr. Goodhead. And I said, oh, What's that, guys? Did you say Dr. Goodhead? Yo, yeah, this chick, you're. Mm-mm. She, she's giving everybody a ride. <laughs> and I said, damn, damn. I said, well, no judgment for her. I mean, if that's her thing, if she want to be doc- known as Dr. Goodhead around the block, then cool. You know, <laughs> hashtag life goals. <laughs> but I just thought, you know. I've, I've encountered a conversation with um, Dr. Goodhead and she has talked about how she would like a, the white picket fence and, and the kids and the whole nine yards. And I'm just like, girl, how are you going to get a husband if you're known as Dr. Goodhead? Like, nobody going to stay with you if you're just literally bouncing around. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, God, I'm going to hell. Um, damn. I was just like, oh. Oh. Well, that's cool, bro. But you know that she's doing it to everybody, right? And he's like, oh, damn. Well, now that I know that, I'll just, you know, do whatever. And, and let's set her on her way. <laughs> I was like, yeah, bro. Yeah, just uh, keep it moving. Don't think that you're going to have a relationship with that, you know, because... She'd be doing that to everybody. And he's like, damn. And uh, a friend of mine was like legit trying to set up a relationship. But once I told him, I was like, bruh, everybody, everybody getting a ride. She's on a village bicycle. Everybody's on a ride. (laughs) Oh, this is terrible. This is probably the worst episode. If you are a feminist lady, you will never listen again. (laughs) My apologies. Psych. Frank TJ Mackey says, I'm not sorry. <laughs> oh, but damn, you know, I just feel like if your goal is to get the husband or the lady of your dreams and the family and the white pick fence and the big house and the stay at home mom, all that jazz. I just don't see how you're going to get there if you're known as Dr. Goodhead around the block. Like, how? How? How, Sway? How? How, like Sway? You take a few steps back to go You ain't got the answers, water. man. You ain't hey, got the answers. Girl, you shouldn't be doing that. But then I was like, you know what? Dr. Goodhead could die tomorrow. Dr. Goodhead could fucking die tomorrow. And if this is the life that she thinks she has to live to get what she wants, then God bless her little heart. <laughs> Um, Jesus, I'm trying to be kind. I just feel like that is the wrong strategy to get in what you want. I feel like um, if you're slightly unobtainable, that, that guys will want you a little bit more. But if you're easy, if guys, if guys can get the milk for free, then it's a wrap. You're not Denise the Peace. You're Dr. Goodhead. And don't nobody want to fuck with you in another 20 years because they know you'll be full of diseases. And, uh... Guys don't want to know that everybody's gotten in there. Just saying. So, as a word of advice, maybe consider your trajectory. 
Dr. Goodhead might be cool for a little while, but you might want to, you might want to maybe retire. All my guy friends are going, no, 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 let me get a ride. No, 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 no. Shut up, Rambo, bro. Shut up. <laughs> Yo, I, I'm on my way to tell Dr. Goodhead to stop it. You heard it here first. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm, a, I'm an observer. This is the things that I see. And I'm just going to let it be. I try to make suggestions for my friends and family. But at the end of the day, we are all in charge of our life. At the end of the day, you have to sleep with whatever decisions you make at night. So uh, if if you want to be Dr. Goodhead, then go on ahead and be the best Dr. Goodhead you know how to be, girl. Okay? Around the world and back snap. Be the best Dr. Goodhead you know how to be or if you're a gay man be the best Dr. Goodhead you know how to be I'm not gonna discriminate my my gay homies you know if that's what you wanna be if you wanna be a hoe be honest just be honest just keep it real just keep it 100 be honest and I think the right people will respect you I, I, I respect her because this is what she wants to do right now I respect honesty. That's what I will say. I respect honesty. So as long as you communicate, hey, this is what I'm about, then that's it. But if you're trying to get that, that, you know, that life, that, that uh, storybook ending, I just don't know where Dr. Goodhead ends up. (laughs) I do know where Dr. Goodhead ends up. (laughs) How dare you? I have got to turn this shit off because I have already caused way too much of a ruckus. I must, I must, I must, I must go to bed. It is business hours in London. And if you are a lady, I commend you for hanging in there because this might have been the most non-lady episode I've ever made. So if you are lady... (laughs) Pat yourself on the back. <laughs> Go to therapy. Because <laughs> you'll need it after this episode. <laughs> Hell, I need it after this episode. I've always needed it this whole time. That's why I do this podcast. This is my this is my broke manish lady uh therapy session. <laughs> These are my confessions. Anyhow, turn this shit off because I'll never fucking leave and I need to go to sleep. I've got a, uh, air quotes job to do. (laughs) Uh, but please like, share, and subscribe to Ramble Per Radio, rambleperadio.com, TikTok, uh, Ramboper underscore Gen T523, uh, Instagram, Gen T523, DJ Gen T523, eBay, Good Care Inc. Tell a friend, but only if they're cool. This show is not meant for negative Nancy's sensitive Sally's. This is for the true sayers and lie slayers. And on that note, let me see if I have any sound clips for you. I don't think I do. Oops. Oh no, I lost my little Tinderelli. Oh shit. Fuck. I lost her. No sound clips this week. I hope you are enjoying the sounds of K Trinata. Please, once again, go download, follow at K Trinata, all caps. Download. Tell me what you think about K Trinata. Get at me. Tell me what you would do for a milli. Would you suck your friend's dick for a million dollars? Let me know. Get at me in the comments and the DMs and the text. Tell me tell me something crazy. I don't know. 
Uh, and just remember, uh, next week, I will be the only podcast live. <laughs> Because I have no life. So don't think that this because it's Christmas or whatever the fuck that I'm going to be resting over here. Rambo for radio. We working, son. We're eating good. I'm eating clean. I'm eating my veggies. I'm saying my prayers. I'm taking my vitamins. And I'm fucking sweating uncontrollably. And it's not because I'm overweight. Because I'm exercising like a motherfucker. So on that note, this is Rambo Burrito. And I'm out.